Okay, can you hear me in the back? Okay, all right. Um, so let's get started. Um, we'll, we'll have more chance doing the, uh, you know, getting the USB and then download the file you need later on. But uh, let's start with the, uh, the actual uh, session. So welcome to the uh, OpenStack Tiger hands-on session. Uh, my name is Ka Yu Kian. I'm a senior cloud deployment lead with uh, Ericsson Cloud Platforms. Um, hi everyone, my name is uh, Anthony Lin. I work in the same uh, department as uh, Caillou. I'm also a senior cloud deployment lead at uh, Ericsson uh, Cloud Platforms. Yeah. Okay, so um, for today's uh, session, we're, gonna, we're going to begin with um, a high-level uh, overview of the uh, workflow of uh, BNF creation using Tacker. Um, we're going to, you know, um, uh, we have some objecti objectives that we need to achieve um, the, by the end of the session. And also, um, we, we will have a little bit more time uh, spent on VirtualBox and Dev uh, Stack uh, tech installation, which is the, the USB drive that we're passing around right now. Um, if you don't have it, uh, we'll, you will get a chance later. We will spend time on, on that as well. And uh, once we have our uh, Dev Stack with the Tacker environment running, uh, we can begin our hands-on activities. And we'll have a, a, bunch, a list of um, tasks that we can, we can go through. Okay, here's a, a high level of a, a workflow um, for Tacker when we, when we st uh, want to be, uh, create a uh, VNF. So f first, uh, we have to create the, uh, the, the VNFD catalogs. Um, these catalogs are, are based on task up templates, and uh, once they are created, they're, they reside in the, uh, the Tacker database. And when we initiate the, uh, the VNF create, either from Horizon or COI, um, we will um, access the, uh, the VNFDs, which depends on which uh, VNF you want to create. Um, for example, we have some uh, Cirrus or some Ubuntu and also some open WRT uh, VNFs, uh, Ds in our example. And uh, then, then Tacker will convert the, uh, the, the VNFD catalogs into um, heat template. And then heat template will utilize the underlying uh, OpenStack components to create the, uh, the VNF uh, VMs. So in, in, the, in the virtual infrastructure. And that's basically how we, uh, you know, uh, we, we will create our uh, VNFs. And for today's, uh, the objectives, uh, objectives um, we will, you know, uh, learn how to create the, the VNF catalogs. Uh, we will go through uh, basic lifecycle management we will create, we will delete uh, VNFs. Um, we will also see the, uh, the, the health monitoring and uh, auto healing uh, capabilities uh, um, based on the, um, the, the monitoring policies we define in our VNF catalogs. And uh, finally, we will we'll, uh, do the uh, VNF configuration update um, as well. Okay, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have a uh, USB stick that we're passing around. It contains a um, um, dev stack environment on VirtualBox. Uh, depending on what PC you have, we have a, a Windows version, we have a Mac version, and we also have a VirtualBox, you know, in, um, uh, ex executables uh, of our binaries if you don't have a VirtualBox installed already. And we also have uh, a VirtualBox and uh, uh, dev stack via an installation guide. It's a step-by-step -step, uh, procedure on how to uh, bring up your um, dev stack environment. And um, we, also, we also have a, uh, our own um, Wi-Fi access point to download the, uh, the lab manuals. In case you don't get the, the USB, you can go to this link uh, to download the, uh, the hands-on um, lab manuals where we have the, all the steps to complete all the tasks for this uh, session. And of course, this will be very useful. Um, later on, if you wanna try it, you know, you can, you can spend some time on, on, on this as well. Right, and we have put the uh, Tosca template that we'll be using today on this uh, HTTP server as well, if you, if you guys need it. Uh, we did not put the image there because it's, it's pretty big. It, if everyone used the Wi-Fi access point at the same time, it's most probably going to jam it. So. So anyone else uh, 
doesn't yeah. have this USB stick, uh, have not copied. Uh, it seems like all the guys behind. Yeah. So who, who has finished? Yeah, if, you, if you're finished with can, your can you just, uh, 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 USB, you can uh, pass probably to the back. Yeah. Um, We'll give you some a little bit more time. If you yeah. want to write this down, whether you have you know the USB or not, um, this is the the SSID. And then I don't know in the back if you cannot see it well. It's uh, SSID is tacker dash lab, and then the uh, security key is uh, tacker so one two three. My colleague, we did not enroll. And then the uh, really the IP address. Do you have a slot? Um, uh, if there is a space. Uh, the, for, the, the for the manuals and the and the, the templates are on one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot one dot twenty. Uh, colon 8,000. Uh, so wh whoever has the USB stick, it depends on your OS uh, and you, you know you just copy either Mac or Windows. Uh, for those with uh, Ubuntu uh, OS, we will probably open up our private cloud and you can try and connect to it, but you can only use Horizon for, for that cloud. We are not going to uh, give you CLI access. So that's the only limitations. Yep. Okay. So okay, uh, let's start. Um, So, okay. So, um, we'll, we'll have uh, you know uh, five more minutes. Five more minutes. Yeah. Let's right. uh, just, just make just sure things you have to pass as around. many people yeah. uh, have their own dev stack environment up and running before we uh, begin. So uh, for, for those who cannot use the Mac and Windows, uh, you can actually connect to our SSID, uh, which is here, and um, try and connect to it and see whether it works. So this is the one. And the password is attack123, uh, uh, right? So we will join the network. Yes. Oh, password. Okay. Uh, Tacker one two three. All small letters. Yeah. You 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 want to type it and then maybe uh, so for people to see the, uh, the actual password. Had to actually had it. Just put it on like a notepad or something. Yeah. Maybe too many people joining. So this is the password. So. Um, if you're not able to connect, uh, give it a try maybe a couple more times. But yeah, it yeah. might be because a lot of people yeah, are maybe assessing a lot of people at the same are time. Using it. That's why we, we prepare for Yeah, uh, which the, is the why USB. we prepare the USB stick. Yeah. Yes? Uh, it's inside the uh, USB stick. Did you manage to copy it earlier on? It's inside the uh, virtual box uh, folder. Yes, in yes. the back. It's uh, not connecting? It's not connecting. Anybody? Uh, 
I'll, I'll put the plug and try again. Yeah. Attacker one, two, three. Because when we tested earlier, it was working for us, so. It, it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it should, it should yeah. work. It should work. I mean, we were just hoping that. Okay, again, if you have uh, finished, you know, up, uh, copying the uh, USB, uh, you can pass it around and just so that other people can uh, can use it. Okay, so I, I power cycled the. Yeah, so w once you can connect to the Wi Fi, you should be able to see the uh, 192.168.1.21, which is the. Uh, this, this is our own cloud. Uh, for, for those who cannot access using the. Uh, I mean, let's say if you cannot install on time, if you want to try, you can use this. Um, but I mean, I, I hope that most people can use the virtual box itself because if too many people use the access point, it's uh, it might be a problem. Um, the IP address is one nine two one six eight one dot twenty one. Let me see how do I show this bigger? No. Word. It's uh, 192.168.1.21, port 80. Is, is it better? H HTTP, yeah. HTTP. Yeah, it's HTTP. Yeah. So it's port 80. Yeah. So, so this is the, uh, the IP. Are you guys able to connect to the, the access point, or I, I don't I mean. Yes. yes. The username password, it's. Uh, uh, Enter. Yeah. So it's. So this is the dashboard IP. The, the password, it's. Uh, the username is nfv underscore user. USB for Windows, yes. Yes, yes. there is. So the, the USB drive contains the Both. Windows and Mac yes. version. Uh, who, anyone else okay. is holding on to a USB stick? I think you should pull up the um, the, the guide. Let's pull up the guide. Oh, yes, the guide. At, at the end, we have the, uh, all the access information. So, uh, oh. yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, but anyway, this is the login and password. Yeah, th this one with the local hosts, is, if you have your own um, running OpenStack, uh, you know, uh, DevStack environment, then th yes. that's how you access your uh, horizon. Yes, what's the question? I'm sorry? Zoom in? Ah. So this this is going to be one nine two one six eight one dot twenty one, and the login is nfv underscore user, and the password is devstack. So this this is only for people who cannot set up a virtual box on on their own laptop.
So I, I hope most people are able to go in. Okay, how, how many of you have uh, your dev stack running? Most people have it running, right? I mean, we, we, will go, we can go through the instructions yeah. again just to show you how to bring it up. So I, I, think, I think we are half an hour past the starting yeah. time. Maybe we'll, we'll start now, right? Okay. Uh, so, so basically, for those with uh, VirtualBox, you, you should restore your image. Um, and after that, do not select Create Snapshot. Uh, you should start running uh, after that. Right? Once, once you start running, you, you're going to see. Um, so let me just exit out of this. And we, we'll, we'll go in using port 2220. So we'll go into the local host using port 2220. So the password is uh, dev stack. It's same as the username. So you should be able to log into your um, the VM uh, via SSH from from here. So we did include uh, the, the instructions as well uh, in in the uh, lab menu that we provided. Um, so let me just uh, minimize this. Yes. Yes, re restore, please restore from the snapshot. snapshot. Don't, don't, don't just power on because uh, then the OpenStack service will, will have some problems. So just restore the snapshot and. Um, I'm sorry? Right, after you, yes, you restore the snapshot, yeah, you can start it. The password is dev stack, <coughs> same as the username. So password, username, it's the same. We are using port 2220 for SSH uh, port forwarding. Everyone managed to get in? Okay, so uh, so once you are inside the VM, you're going to see uh, a few folders. So the first folder is, of course, the one that we use to build the dev stack, and our RC file is uh, here. So you you source the um, RC file, and then the, you go here into the tacker folder, which has all the Tosca um, template inside. So we will start with. I mean, if, if you look at your web manual, it, I mean, lab manual, it, it's going to be uh, the first thing that we're going to do is uh, we, we'll do some uh, sanity tests, like things like Nova list. It should work. And um, of course, you can do your glance image list. So in, in this lab, we have uh, two images that we're going to use. The OpenWRT is a open source uh, firewall router that uh, we, we're going to demonstrate uh, in this um, session. And then we have the Ubuntu image, which is a Apache HTTP server that we kind of created for showing uh, monitoring as well. So um, this is our basic sanity checks, and we, we know that it's working. So the next thing that we want to do according to the, uh, the lab is that we're going to start with the first task, which is to create a VNF with multiple zeros image. So we, we do have um, a couple of uh, things. I mean, all the different um, template here. 
So we can do this based on what we have here, right? We're going to use the VNF uh, D uh, descriptor create command to create our um, VNFD, right? So we will have to give it a name. We will have to tell it like which file we are actually using. And then we'll hit enter. So it will create a VNFD after you issue this command. Um, so I, I can show you guys on the Horizon dashboard um, how, how, how it's going to look like. So on the Horizon dashboard for, for this particular VM, we are going to use port 2221 on your local host. And it's the same login as earlier, nfv underscore user followed by dev stack. You should go into your VirtualBox Horizon GUI. So over here, um, you have different tabs. So you, you do have a uh, NFV uh, tab over in the dashboard. So after running the VNFD command, which we execute from the uh, CLI, you will see this being created. If you click on this, you can actually see the content of the um, VNFD that was created earlier on. So you, you have things like description. Basically, you give it a description on what kind of a template you're creating, the name of the template. And, and over here, we are saying that we will use the Cirrus uh, image. Right? We have M1 tiny flavor created. The availability zone is, um, can, can you guys see yeah. it? It might be a little bit too small, but no. It, it should be, yeah. It's okay? Okay. okay. So uh, you have your management driver. So we, we, we do have three of them. Uh, as in um, three kinds of uh, things that we expect. We have management, we have uh, infra, and we have monitoring and tackle. So, so then you, you have your uh, network interfaces over here. Your virtual link, one, two, and three. And this is your VDU uh, vir uh, virtualization um, deployment unit to, um, and this is your VDU tree. So within this template, it's going to create a VNF which will spin up three zeros uh, VM. So of course, uh, this is a demo. You can definitely use it for some, some other um, VMs that y you have. And the next thing that we can do, either we can use the command line, which is uh, pretty straightforward. So we'll do like multi zeros. VNF, D, uh, VNF, and then we'll select this one. And we'll just click on deploy. You can either use the horizon or you can use whatever that we have inside the lab manual, which is basically a command line. So when you hit deploy VNF, it's going to use that VNF D template to create the VNF. And you see that it's uh, pending create under the VNF uh, manager tab. So we just have to wait for a while for the VNF uh, to come up. I mean, it depends on the computer speed, of course. Um, right. I can show the VM. So it, it, will, it will show up under the instances. So. Basically, using heat, it will trigger the creation of the virtual machines. So in this case, we'll get three zeros using that template. It all becomes active. Let's look at the um, console, just to make sure that everything is working, right? So we will, in this case, it's going to be port forward on localhost 6080, which is the default that we have. So you can see that the Cirrus image did, uh, I mean, the Cirrus VM did come up. Uh, just, just show that we can, you know, th that's the same thing. We can, we can log in using the default password, uh, which is here, okay? This is a default password. And just do a if config. You can see that it gets a DHCP IP on the management interface. Um, and of course, from here, 
if you do tackle VNF list, you will see your VNF being created. And you can do things like just ping it. The one that we were looking at was uh, dot tree. It pings. Then, of course, I think inside the lab menu, I was also show, we were also trying to show that you can do like a SSH into this guy. Right, so it goes in as well. So from the dev stack, you have full accessibility to the VM via the management interface. So, um, and this, this is like the first uh, use case that uh, the first lab exercise that uh, we, we're gonna show. So it's, it's a straightforward one. It basically shows that you can create multiple VMs with the VNF uh, kind of functionalities. So um, after this, we're gonna create the second one. So how, just, just make sure that you clean up the uh, system because we are running on very limited resource, so we will just use the Horizon GUI to terminate the VNF. Yeah, so make sure you terminate the VNs using the VNF manager so that it will be you know, automatically deleting all the three instances that you have just created. Right. So it will go and clean up everything. So when you go back to instances, no more. Right? Everything is gone. You can check from CLI, it's gonna be the same thing. It's gonna return an empty set. Um, so the, i show you guys how to do the VNF catalog from the Horizon GUI. You can do onboard VNF, select the file, which we did put on the HTTP server, <coughs> so you can download from there. Um, so the next thing that we want to do, we'll do a simple use case of uh, monitoring the Cirrus uh, VM. So just select the uh, YAML and I'm just gonna give it a name called Cirrus Monitor. And on board. So you will look at the Tosca um, template and now we have a, um, all, all this different um, content. So this is a bit different from earlier on. We include the monitoring policy, uses ping ICMP to monitor the VM, if it is um, not able to reach it uh, within the timeout limit, it's gonna respawn the um, VM to recreate it uh, when it dies, basically. So the rest of it is pretty similar. Uh, we will again use this to deploy a VNF. We'll just call it Xerox Monitor. We'll select the monitor template, and then we'll just deploy. So it, 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 will, it will come up. Okay, so now that it's active, we will go again, go back to here, click here. Go to the console. So it's up now. Right, so it, it is assigned the HTTP IP of dot uh, six. So just uh, from here, Just make sure that we can ping this. Basically, it's monitoring via the ping. So the next thing that we want to do is from here, shut down the interface to simulate a loss of ping. So after the monitoring times out, can I see it? No, sorry. So it gets, uh, we're just waiting for, you see, the, the background server is running. You can see that the hot template was actually uh, triggered again after it lost the ping. And this thing goes down. So the next time when you, when you check the instance, you will see something called a respawn 
one dash one, which is the first time when it respawns. It's going to show that it comes up. So again, we'll check that indeed it comes up. All right. So you can see that the host name has changed. It has actually come up. So um, this is a simple example of how Tacker can be used to monitor uh, VNF, VM. So okay, we'll we'll clean up the system again. So the next thing that we want to show is that you can actually pass a configuration file into the VM before you spin it. So user data, right? So I'm just going to call it user data, and then I'm going to select the file. Um, it's this one. User data config monitor. That's just a file that we use. So a lot of all these files are found inside um, the um, OpenStack uh, website. So we, we took the samples and we kind of change it and just adapt for for our usage. So just take a look at what's inside here. It's passing the user data that we want to um, set up the etc host file of the CROS VM um, with this um, particular use case. So in a lot of cases, sometimes when you create different virtual machines, you kind of want to set up things like if config, um, your network interfaces file, your um, etc host, your DNS, for instance. So in this case, what it does is it just capture the if, um, I um, mean, as in the if zero um, IP address, check what's the host name, and then after that, basically, we just use the SED command to um, pass it into the etc host, so you can actually see it when it comes up. Um, so we, we we will show that uh, it, it does that. So it becomes uh, active. So this VM comes up. If you log in, and you do a cat on the ETC host. You will see that the if zero IP sorry has been passed in the host name. It's set up according to the expected results. So of course you can do different things. I mean you can think of something else for your VMs. You you could actually do other stuff. This is like just a bash script that we are actually passing information inside. Um, so this thing can be done um, depending on the needs. So uh, anyone has any question? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so if you are, yes, it's actually one dot. Yeah, so the, the, the HTTP server is 20. Wait, is it connected? No, but. It should be we, inside. Yeah, we will, yeah, it's under the attacker folder. Correct. If you, you have your uh, um, VirtualBox uh, VM dev stack, right? It's in the home directory, and then inside the attacker uh, folder. 
120, it's not responding. This is 1.21.20. So, yeah, it, let's say if you cannot um, see it, it's, it's actually here. It's, it's inside the VM itself as well. Uh, 246. Yeah, it's, it's all here. I, I think uh, I might need to power cycle this guy again. <laughs> Sorry for that. Yes? Um, you have to use our local host. One twenty seven zero zero one using port two 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 zero. After that, did did you restore the snapshot or did you actually start it just like this? You kind of need to restore the snapshot to make sure that. The V that okay. Uh, let me show. So you, you need to do something like this. Right. Okay. So this is your Mac. You kind of need to, for right. for instance, like this. You need to do this. You need to click on this. Restore. And do not select this and then do restore. OK, I'll show you again. Yeah. So, so um, this, this, suppose this is your VM, because mine is running. I, I, I don't want to shut it down. So you will see the base image, and you will see something with the current state. Don't, don't actually start with the current state, because with the current state, all the services will go down. So the way that we actually do this is that we use snapshot of a working environment uh, so that when you restore the snapshot, you have all the OpenStack services running properly. So then the things that you need to do is you need to use click on this button. Right? Do a, you select the first one, click on restore, uncheck this box, and then you hit restore. And then after that, it will show you as a safe um, state. Yeah, safe. And basically, you just have to click here. And you will start to restore your uh, VM. Uh, after that, all the OpenStack services uh, should, be, should be running. Right, so are you guys, is it OK? Yeah. You don't see any snapshots, so I think. Let me go. Take a look. I installed a Windows VM, mm -hmm. and there are no snapshots when I go to. What's going on with this?
okay, did you restore? Yeah, um, so someone had a question earlier on how, how, how to get the YAML file. It's, it's uh, over here. So it's 1.20 1 if you're connected on the Wi-Fi. So I think, I think the server hung. Maybe, maybe you can try again. Because I'm, I'm able to access the uh, OpenStack in, in, that, in that cloud as well, so should be fine. So, so these are all the uh, PDF and the, uh, the guide and, uh, and all the YAML that we have. You guys are uh, ha having other problems? Yeah. Can, can I have one more?
Um, sorry, guys. Yeah, can, maybe I'll just uh, carry on with the last three uh, task that we're going to show. So, um, so the next thing that we're going to do is we will show that you can do HTTP Apache server monitoring. So basically, it's uh, using command line to be able to do a VNF create of the. Uh, so we, the the important thing is to take note of the ID over here. We we basically uses the ID of the uh, VNF default to to do the creation. So then we will go back to the dashboard and uh, take a look at what we have over here. We might have timeout. So I, I am creating a Ubuntu server that it's a HTTP server as well. So it, it takes a while to spawn because, it's because this, this is much bigger than a CROS. And depending on your machine, it might take like five minutes just for it to come up. It's actually caching the image onto uh, clients, so it takes a while, the first one, the first time. So we'll just wait for the uh, VM to come up. So in, in the interest of time, I'll, I'll just do another one. For we're just waiting for now.
So this VM is taking a while. I'll just show you guys uh, the one for uh, updating the uh, firewall configurations on the uh, OpenWRC. So if you look at the firewall config, we are taking away the last two block and updating some of the configurations here in this uh, virtual machine. So um, we will look at what we have here. We have. Um, We will use the VNF update command. And pass in a configuration file. So what, what, one of the things that I want to, you guys to know is that we, we have this here. So when we, after we update, this block will be gone. So Tacker can also be used for monitoring the VNF. Sorry. It's called open firewall. Uh, okay, wait, let me, maybe I did it wrongly. Sorry. Um, Let me just uh, try again. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll spin another one. I think uh, because I passed the wrong thing. Yeah, I, I probably forgot to wait for the SSH uh, to come up. Uh, that's why one of the things that I have to wait for is for the SSH to to be ready before I can run the config, and that's why it's not working. We have to wait for a while for the SSH to come up. Okay, SSH is up. So we'll go to the config file, and then uh, we'll look at what's inside the firewall. We'll remove these two blocks with the uh, command. <laughs> oh, okay. Give <laughs> me, it's... Uh, I'm not too sure why. Oh, okay, okay, I know. I gave a wrong command, sorry.
So I, I know I'm jumping around, sorry. So while we wait for that to come out, I'll, I'll show you about the, um, how we actually can monitor our Apache service from here. So we will shut off the service. And you, it will actually respond from here. So it's just to show that you can monitor port 8000 on the, uh, the Ubuntu VM, which is the Apache server. And the last thing that we want to try is, again, we'll, we'll still go and try on this guy. So the correct com command is with the file. And this time around, I, I'm calling it uh, one. OK, it, it updated the VNF this time around. So when, when, when you come back to the VNF, you will notice that the last two blocks is actually removed now. So the, uh, the idea of this is that other than uh, monitoring, you can also do things like uh, management of the uh, VNF, provided you have the correct management driver. In this case, it can manage a uh, firewall VM. So um, that, that, that's what uh, it is doing. Um, so I, I think we have uh, one and a half hours, so it is about the end. Um, do you guys have uh, any questions? I mean, we have one last task that can be followed from the, uh, the PDF. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we, 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 can, we can take questions. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. How how do I implement the firewall? Oh, the the driver. Um, so it's here, right? So if you go if you go into your dev stack, opt stack, tackle tackle vnf, I mean vm management driver, you will actually see the management driver that's available. In this case, you have the uh, no-op and open WRT. So this is, it comes default with the uh, dev stack. Um, of course, if you want to manage other VNF, then what you have to do is to write a management driver for that VNF. So that, that's how it's able to manage the, uh, the VNF itself, the VM and the firewall, for instance. Yeah, so it's inside here. Right, so right, it's 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 basically a Python file that it's inside here, that can be done. Yes. Says you know un unrecognized CPU type and all this crap. Right, right, right. Okay. So can I get a copy yeah, of yours sure. after you? 
after the thing. I'll, I'll give it to you. Yes.